The chances are that if you're watching this channel, you know that both Renault and Nissan are working very hard on their own autonomous vehicle programs, developing a suite of advanced driver assistance and fully autonomous vehicles alongside a next generation range of electric cars. And I'm one of the lucky few to have experienced them firsthand at the Renault Nissan Innovation Technology Innovation Center in Silicon Valley, riding in both a self driving Nissan Leaf and a partially autonomous Renault Zoe ZE. Well, later this year, we'll see some of that technology reach the marketplace inside Nissan's next generation Leaf in the form of Nissan's Pro Pilot driver assistance package, first made available in the Nissan Serena minivan in Japan at the end of last year. The current iteration of Pro Pilot combines the lane keep assistance with radar activated cruise control, cross collision detection action and traffic jam assist to keep you and your car perfectly positioned in the lane at all times and a safe distance from the car in front. Eventually, however, it will be far more advanced with Nissan planning full Level 5 autonomy for its vehicles by 2020. As a reminder, Level 5 autonomy not only means the car can drive for you, something we're already seeing in certain vehicles, but it can drive for you all of the time and be able to cope with an unexpected event without requiring you to take over control of the steering wheel. Right now, systems like Tesla's Autopilot and the current generation of Pro Pilot can't do that. They can take over some of the driving duties, but you're required to be in the vehicle and alert so that you can take over if the system can't deal with something. Full Level 5 autonomy is important, though, as it gets cars to the point where they no longer need drivers. Assuming, of course, that we can sort out the legislative implications of that, which in turn means that your car may not need you in it in order to drive somewhere. Which is why the Renault-Nissan alliance has been hard at work behind the scenes with several companies, including Japanese game developer DNA and French transport firm Transdev, on developing their own autonomous vehicle ride-sharing platforms. Eventually, the goal of both companies is to offer driverless car hailing and ride-sharing services, something which could help them transition from being merely automakers into being mobility providers. Of course, the idea isn't all that new. Many other companies, including Daimler, BMW, and Tesla, have explored the option of having fully autonomous rideshare services in the not too distant future. But it's important to note here a little difference. Renault Nissan's stance on autonomous vehicles has always been towards a future where autonomous vehicles give drivers the option to do the driving themselves rather than doing all the driving as a car, letting the computers do the boring, menial driving in town, and then letting owners or suitably qualified passengers to have the option of driving when the road becomes less bothersome and more fun. And that means we're not just likely to see an Uber or Lyft clone from the Alliance using autonomous electric cars, but also a service a little closer to BMW's DriveNow or ReachNow service, where you can book a car to borrow and, rather than have to go through town tracking said vehicle down, have it drive to a convenient place to meet you. Also possible, although I think less so, is a service that Tesla CEO Elon Musk has hinted at that Tesla will develop for its customers, a way of making money out of your car during the day when you're not using it by allowing your neighbors or colleagues to make use of your car. By leveraging fully autonomous vehicle capabilities, it's been suggested that those who still choose to own their own vehicles, some inevitably will do, even as autonomous vehicles and ride-sharing services become more common, and then they could make their vehicles pay for themselves, receiving payments or credits through the car's automaker or a third-party system every time they allow their car to go off on some autonomous ride-sharing adventure. And since the car would be able to drive itself too, you could always request your car return to home, or whenever you needed it, to ride in your own personal vehicle. Of course, then, it's no surprise that Renault-Nissan, like other major leaders in electric vehicle technology, are working on ride-sharing services that make use of autonomous vehicles, as well as the wireless inductive charging technology those vehicles will need to happily autonomously charge in between jobs. Indeed, by 2030, it's estimated that the autonomous vehicle ride-sharing market will be worth five times what the taxi market is today. It's big business, and Renault-Nissan, like BMW and Tesla, once in on the ground floor. 
Just like other autonomous vehicle programs, though, there are some legislative hurdles that threaten to get in the way and scupper any technical progress that's being made. While the cars are almost ready to drive themselves, the law isn't. And with every country, and sometimes every state and region, having their own special snowflake set of requirements for autonomous vehicles, there needs to be a global consensus on autonomous vehicle operation before we can see such programs really take off. Dealing with those legislative hurdles is going to take some time, and it's going to require buy-in from all of the rival companies to ensure that they're all asking the same thing of legislators. In Renault-Nissan's case, that's going to have to include a good way of ensuring that those who can drive get the option of driving themselves, while those who can't can also make use of the same vehicles. While that's fairly easy to implement technically, it's going to be very interesting to see how the legislative process responds to the Alliance's wish to let people drive if they want, since every time a human steps behind the wheel, they increase the risk of an accident. I guess we'll just have to wait and find out what the solutions are that are presented. Do you like the idea of having an autonomous car that can come and pick you up? Do you think car ownership will drop when vehicles like Renault-Nissan's automated lift share service become a reality? Or do you still not trust self-driving cars? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this, why not contribute to our running costs via Patreon? I've left a link below and a clickable one at the end of the video. That's it. Thanks for joining me. I'll be back soon. And until then, Keep evolving!